Hi guys, my name is Lex and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be bringing to you my worst reads of 2017. Guys, it's about to go down. I'm about to share with you the worst reads for me for 2017. I'm hoping it's not too brutal. I'm hoping I don't offend too many people, but first off, I'm going to start with a quick disclaimer. We're all adults here. We are all entitled to our own opinion. Therefore, if you do not like one of my opinions, that is fine. That is fine. Don't get personally offended. I'm not attacking you as a person. Let's just get straight into it because this is gonna be a quick one until we can move on with our lives. So I've got five books that are my worst reads of 2017 with two runners up. Let's get started. Okay, starting with my runners up for worst book, we are going to start with Spellslinger by Sebastian de Castell. Now this follows a boy named Kellen who is facing his first Madge's Jewel, which is the start of a four trial process that will make him a spellcaster. Unfortunately, he does not have any magic. so. This is him trying to work through that. Now, I'm not gonna say this one is a bad book. I'm not gonna say it was one of my worst reads. This one I'm putting on my list because I DNF'd it at about 18%. So I got about 54 pages through this one before I put it down. And I just couldn't connect to the story at this point, but I'm gonna bring that down to when I was reading it, I was just not in the mood to. I'm a massive mood reader. So if I'm not in the mood to read this, I won't pick it up. And unfortunately, I put it down and never picked it up again. So I am down a DNF it for this year. However, I would like to go back to this one next year when I'm in a better set frame of mind and when I'm ready for this read. And hopefully it comes out with a better result. But unfortunately this time, I just, I couldn't finish it. And the next runner up is Because You Hate To Love Me. Because You Love To Hate Me, edited by Amory. Now, this is a story that has been circling booktube like there is no tomorrow. It is 13 short stories of villainy and basically an author was partnered up with a booktuber and in this case, they've given them a prompt and the author has written a short story on it. Unfortunately for me, I did not connect with this story and I feel like if any book that I mentioned today is going to offend anyone, it's probably going to be this one, but I could not connect to any of the stories and I just didn't care. And it wasn't a horrific story, so it's not like it was bad, it was just disappointing to me because this was so hyped up in the community, but unfortunately it just fell really, really short for me. The writing was great, yeah, I think when it's short stories I feel really disconnected to them and as well as none of these stories in here were memorable for me and none of them I connected with and none of them I'll remember and be like, oh, do you remember that story? That was freaking amazing. I just didn't connect with them. Yes, the Schwab story was good, but it didn't make up for the other ones that I just didn't care for. So now we're moving on to our worst reads and number five is Stags by M.A. Bennett. Now this book is about nine students, three blood sports, and one bloody weekend. It revolves around a girl named Gria who goes to a prestigious school where everyone is privileged and basically she is invited by the popular crowd who are nasty to her to a weekend away with them and she thought that's a good idea. She was like, oh yeah, that'd be awesome. I can bond with them. They're assholes to you. What the fuck are you doing? Basically they go away, someone dies, and this is finding out what happened. I did not like this book as much as I thought I would. I loved the premise, I thought the premise was awesome, however, this was pitched as a thriller and it wasn't a thriller. All it had for me was bitchy, privileged teens. There were movie references in here that were continual, like it wasn't just a movie reference every once in a while, it wasn't eloquently weaved through the story, they were on every page and it really took away from the story. As well as that, the characters were just really underdeveloped for me and I did not enjoy this one. I ended up giving this one a 2 out of 5 stars. I didn't enjoy it, didn't like it. Number 4 on my list is Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. Now this one is about two best friends who have a really toxic relationship. One of them is a liar and a thief. The other one is an heiress and they have this friendship that is very, very strange throughout the book. For this one, I want to put out there really quickly that the writing style was beautiful. I really enjoyed the way this book was written. I really enjoyed that it was told from, from the end to the start. Like we were working our way backwards sort of thing. Like it started at chapter 18 and went all the way through chapter one. Like I really, really enjoyed that take on it. However, I think like the characters were unlikable and it was almost, they were too unlikable. I was just reading it and I could not care less about either of the characters throughout. 
and I felt like there were no repercussions for the main character who was making poor decisions. There was no recollection that this is not okay, that what I'm doing is psychotic. There was nothing about that. They just went on like, oh, this is fine. It's not fine. I just didn't care for this book as much as I really, really wanted to. It just wasn't for me. Number three on my list is Out of Heart by Earthren Master, and this one follows Adams, whose grandfather just passes away, and his grandfather donated his organs, so his heart went to another guy named William, who received that heart and ended up living because of his grandfather's sacrifice after he died, which was really, really cool. William woke up and basically wanted to go see the family whose grandfather donated the heart, and then it kind of goes on a weird discovery sort of story. Really? really wanted to like this one. This one focused on such topics that I don't think it talked about very much in contemporary, like the donation of organs and the sacrifices people make. And I think it's a really important topic to discuss in books as well. So it was really, really refreshing. However, I just think the execution was off on this one. It was a really, really slow story to the point where it was very hard to read and it was only 260 pages, but it was a real struggle to read. The character, main character Adam was developed, yes, but none of the side characters felt like they had too much development to them and they don't, they didn't feel like they were whole, they didn't feel like they were layered, so I didn't enjoy that, but yeah, this one was just a bit too slow of a plot for me to engage with it better. We're getting down to the nitty gritty now guys, number two on my list is Black Panther, A Nation Under Our Feet, volumes one and two by Tanisi Coates. I've stopped reading now, I'm, this will be my end of Black Panther. So obviously this follows Black Panther who is a Marvel superhero living in a place called Wakanda which is basically like an African nation but severely advanced in technology and I was really really excited after seeing Captain America Civil War because I just really wanted to know more about the character of Black Panther because I just really loved him in the movie. I thought there was so much to him and I wanted to know more of his backstory so I picked these up Unfortunately, these fell short for me. I gave them a 2 out of 5 stars and oh, I did not enjoy them. The storyline in both of these is overly complex, like to the point of I had no idea what was going on in either of them and I just don't understand. I made no connection with the character of Black Panther, which I thought I would connect to immediately being a massive Marvel fan, but I made no connection to the character and I was super, super sad about it. I wanted to push through. I pushed through this one and moved on to the second book and it didn't get any better for me. So unfortunately, this is where my love of the Black Panther comic books ends. And now we are on to my worst book of 2017. And this is actually a manga series. And that is Maximum Ride, the manga by James Patterson. I read volumes one to five this year and they had to be my worst read of 2017. I really really pushed through these. I really really wanted to love Maximum Ride but I don't know whether this was the right place to start. I didn't grow up reading Maximum Ride so I thought oh let's just start with the mangas and go from there but I didn't enjoy them. Reading the first two I was like yep okay this is all right. Moving on to number five I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less about the characters and I really really wanted to. I really really wanted to love them but I just didn't. It wasn't enough for me, whether it was the detail of the manga and not having the full story that I didn't enjoy, but I just didn't care and honestly as these went on they get worse. Number one was fine, number two was fine. There was no wow factor, there was nothing drawing me in saying Bex keep reading and keep trying. There was nothing there for me and I I fucking hated it. It was a waste of my time. I don't even know why I bothered. So I'm gonna stop the ranting there guys. I, I don't even know what to say about some of them. It's really hard. I hate talking badly about books, but we got to be honest in our opinion. So those are my opinions about the books that I read this year. Those are my worst five with my two runners up. These videos kind of drag me down a bit. I feel like I've got such a happy vibe going on and then I talk about shitty books, but that's fine. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more and have not already, and chat to me down in the comments. Let me know what your worst read is for 2017 and tell me why. Don't just leave it there. Tell me why you didn't like it, because I'd like to know too. That's it for me today, guys. I make videos every Monday and Thursday, and I will see you in a new one. Bye.